Have you ever been mildly inconvenienced? Maybe been forced to eat without YouTube or had to use the bathroom just as you were falling asleep? Then you can probably relate to this anime girl whose arms, legs, teeth, and eyes were torn from her body. In 2009, an artist took up the task of drawing anime girls in the most horrific scenarios he could possibly dream up, contributing to a disturbing online community whose roots go back to pre-war Japan. A fetish subcategory responsible for tens of thousands of images of anime broads being torn to shreds for adult purposes. So how could there possibly be an audience for this stuff? Who is commissioning it? And what's the actual story behind this meme? This is a case of girls, gore, and anime porn. This is the bizarre origin of the limbless anime girl. Today's bad art history, the quadriplegic anime girl from 2009, old people who get it on, and the weird underbelly of Japanese image boards. Before we begin, I have launched a Patreon for the low, low price of one to five doubloons a month. You get uncensored videos, extended commentary, blooper reels, and a shout out if you want it. Thank you so much to anyone who decides to join. Thank you regardless for watching this slop and back to the video. So if you've been online recently, you may have seen some variation of this meme. It's a beautifully rendered, highly detailed depiction of an anime girl languishing in a hospital bed with a bandage around her eyes. Notably, all four of her limbs are missing and you can make out her chest through her shirt, which is no accident. And for the last year or so, this meme has been making the rounds on Instagram and Twitter. But you may be wondering, why does this illustration exist? And why is she fucked up? The real answer to that question actually comes from the underground art scene in 1930s Tokyo. But before we can even touch that, a quick timeline. 2009, digital artist S. Zenith Lee uploaded this artwork to the Japanese image board Don Boru. And what probably jumps out at you is the sheer despair radiating off this image. Even the website itself has it tagged as soul-crushingly depressing. And the comments reflect this, speculating on what, if anything, could be done to give this girl some semblance of a normal life. But what you don't know is that that this is actually a part two to a previous illustration in which she is taken and brutally rearranged but kept alive. And though we'll come back to that artwork in detail, trust me, the long and short of it is that this anime girl has been separated from her eyes, ears, teeth, mouth, and limbs. And as the artist explains, a while ago there was a local girl who was hit by a truck and ended up losing both her legs and one arm. Visiting victims with this kind of injuries would be pretty awkward, since my cynical self thinks that telling her get well soon would be a little pointless. I wanted to draw a pic with this theme for quite some time. The last pic inspired me to draw this as a continuation. I kid myself that I used up all the blood in the last picture, that's why this one is so clean. But in spite of its shocking nature, this illustration lived in relative obscurity on the Japanese internet, only appearing on several small blogs before it made its first real mark on SafeBoru. SafeBoru is one of numerous Boru type sites whose stated purpose is only to repost the safe for work images from Don Boru. And just to be clear, SafeBoru had no business reposting this particular image, but repost they did. And in 2014, the limbless anime girl finally made her first appearance on the English web via Fortune. Interestingly, her very first appearance resembles the current meme, with an Anon joking that waiting for a game to come out made him feel like he was languishing like the girl in the photo. And then, 2019. A Twitter user posts this image with the caption, went through seven pages of a Don Boru chart account just to find this pic in high quality. And keep in mind that this person could immediately tell that this was chart. The limbless anime girl exploded in popularity, circulating as a reaction image and soaring to new heights in 2022, when Instagram user Intellectual Incel Group posted the first known variation of today's meme. And I hardly have to explain the rest. The desperately sad nature of the image versus the minor inconvenience in the caption made for excellent shit posting material. And with the advent of AI, there's even a version where she gets her legs back. And that's all fine. But the meme itself is hardly the most interesting part of this story, because that's where the common knowledge about it ends. And I'm sure what you're still wondering is, okay, but like, why was this made? Yes, the artist explains his personal reasons, but really think about it, right? Why would an artist invest so much time and skill into mutilating a helpless anime broad? And more to the point, why is it so obvious to so many that this is f art?
Before we can get into any of the truly freaky stuff, I threw quite a few words at you, so let's define them now. What are borus? The word itself comes from the Japanese pronunciation of the word board, as in image board. Don Boru, launched in 2005, is among the most well-known Japanese image boards, with close to millions of art submissions, many of which are extremely explicit. And since making its source code publicly available, dozens if not hundreds of copycat Boru sites with their own theme and specific audience have emerged. And in case you were wondering, yes, it's almost all bad. Safe Boru, as mentioned before, is a Don Boru clone without any of the adult content. But clearly, some submissions slip through the cracks. And as a quick aside, one look at the quadruple amputee tag on Safe Boru should be pretty telling. Because while these artworks don't show anything, they are clearly adult in nature. The attention paid to showing off the cuteness and helplessness of these girls in combination with their limbless bodies is a very strange and obvious contrast. Back to Borus. One thing you ought to understand Stand is that they have an incredibly detailed tagging system, which makes it very easy to search for something like, say, quadruple amputee anime girls with green hair being held by a grown man suspended over a Christmas tree. What I'm saying is, these sites make it incredibly easy to cater to extremely specific fetishes, and with extreme specificity comes extreme content. This brings us to a rather infamous website. <laughs> Pixiv. Don Boru largely receives its submissions from Pixiv, an art-sharing website and Japan's answer to DeviantArt. However, unlike DeviantArt, Pixiv allows for a vast array of very explicit artwork. Many of the more gruesome anime shock images of the last two decades originated on Pixiv. And though it's very much still around, mounting pressure from advertisers have forced it to tighten up its policies. So between the sheer availability of violent hentai on Pixiv and the sea of Borus willing to cater extremely specific comes gurochan.cx, which may remind you of another highly educational website ending in Though Gurochan functions less like a Boru and more like a text-based site, kinda like 4chan, it nevertheless contains an exhaustive catalog of images and GIFs showing unimaginable scenes of anime girls being scrambled. And because the nature of this artwork makes it incredibly insular, a small but thriving community of Goro fetishists exist in this bubble. And the reason I'm telling you all this is so that it's abundantly clear that this drawing, whether it looks that way or not, was specifically intended to be fish art. But even if you can't tell by looking at it, how come some people just know? Welcome to Anime Porn 101. Warning for the entire rest of the video. As a smart and very handsome viewer who is also probably very tall, you may have picked up on my use of the word go instead of gore, and that's because go is very much its own thing. Go, known also as ero go or erotic grotesque, is actually perfectly summarized on Urban Dictionary. It is a Japanese art form that focuses on the bizarre, grotesque, and alteration of one's body mixed with freaky stuff. In the West, gory tie is often referred to as guro, especially if there is a heavily mutilated anime girl covered in blood, missing limbs, or spilling her insides. Often all three is present and the subject is no more. I'm sorry, that was literally like impossible to clean up for YouTube. Please consider subscribing to Patreon and that way I don't have to censor every third word. Guro as a term originated from the phrase ero guro nonsensu, sorry, or erotic grotesque nonsense in Taisho era Tokyo right before World War II. This was the name of a counterculture movement among artists who sought to intentionally make subversive and highly offensive art, kind of like a spiritual sibling to Weimar Germany. And few things are more immediately offensive to the average person than the combination of jork in it and gore. This movement was not long-lived whatsoever, coming under heavy scrutiny by the government and society at large. But much like the other great-granddaddy of hentai, Ero Guru's influence has persisted ever since. And just to put into perspective how influential this movement was, Wikipedia cites it as a foundational influence on the development of this. By 1936, however, with the war effort heating up and fewer resources available for creative pursuits, the Ero Guru nonsense movement was slowly winding down. And its swan song would come in the form of the Sada Abe incident, highly publicized affair in which adult worker Sada Abe ended her lover, jorked his weenus right off his body, and carried it around with her in her kimono as a keepsake. Artists and society at large was captivated by the symbolic quality of this crime, inspiring a final wave of grotesque art work and literature immortalizing her story. But between the war effort and the moral panic about hot women coming to 
hand you, the movement lost momentum for good. But to connect this back to the limbless anime girl, how can you look at this and just know that it's adult in nature? Think about the voyeuristic quality of the image. Whose perspective are we seeing this from? Why did the artist choose to make her chest visible? In fact, why did he choose for her to still have her chest at all. Why is she posed in such a way as to make fully visible the extent of all her injuries? And why does she still nevertheless have the cuteness and polish of a generic anime girl? Put all together, these are pretty direct tells that this art is not just for art's sake. It's fulfilling a very particular function. And knowing all this, the only thing truly left unanswered is what is the appeal of this fetish for people who like it? While my aim here is never to pass judgment, I strongly believe that not all are created equal, and something whose premise is so violent and which necessarily requires another person to suffer probably warrants a closer look. As this Redditor explains, was kept in the realm of fantasy. Like many bitches, in real life, this stuff is completely unarousing. But here, things are exaggerated, unrealistic, and no real people actually get hurt. There's a divide between fiction and reality, the extreme but logical extension of beat them. It could be that some wires got crossed in our brains or something. We don't have a reason, exactly, for enjoying it. We just do. It could be that we got desensitized to regular stuff and turned to more extreme stuff because we couldn't use the normal stuff anymore. And as many point out, it can be a scary but controlled way to approach trauma. I'm not personally convinced that this kind of weird loving reverence explains the average Gurochan user, but at the end of the day, the brain is a fascinating place. And whose brain could be more useful when it comes to explaining all of this than that of the artist himself? So to come way back to the limbless hospital girl, let's remember that this was a sequel artwork to a piece that was actually uploaded a few months prior in July of 2009. And for the sake of brevity, the original artwork depicts the perspective of a really bad guy as he sits across the table from the anime girl who at this point resembles a raw skirt steak. And this same girl is the one pictured recovering in the hospital. And what's coolest of all is that S. Zenith Lee is actually pretty open about why he likes this stuff. On his old blog, he wrote, I consider this one of the most horrible scenes I've ever drawn. I never understand why some sicko would send taunting letters to the family. Zodiac comes to mind. Scans of his letters always give me the creeps. I recently read a novel called Goth by Otsuichi, in which the harm went even further by sending tape recordings and parts of the victim to her sister. Maybe that's the reason why I woke up to a nightmare of this scene a few nights ago. The very next conscious thought of mine is, of course, I gotta draw this down. While it's not clear how much fulfillment Zenith gets from creating these artworks, he's pretty cavalier about his interest in exploring suffering from the perspective of the aggressor and the victim. And while it would be fascinating to get his insight onto the hospital girl as a meme, his last online activity was an illustration uploaded in 2020. He left behind a sizable gallery of incredible, though very explicit, artwork, and his digital footprint is otherwise not known. The only real speculation can be found in this comment, suggesting that his deteriorating health led to his absence. But to be clear, nobody knows. The limbless anime girl is far and away one of the best examples we have of what happens when f chart reaches a completely unexpected audience and gets taken fully out of context. She was intense and grim, but just absurd enough to express very real feelings during our current meme era of post-ironic detachment. And unlike the vast majority of f chart that gets removed from context and put into memes, many people were able to look at this and immediately clock it for what it was. And objectively speaking, is it strange that you can reasonably expect to see fetish art every time you log on? Yes. But that's the internet. And I cannot end this video on a pun this week because I genuinely think that making fun of someone who lost all four of her arms and legs... sucks. This has been Bad Art History.